Hello everyone. Today we begin the chapter Dream Children a Reverie by Charles Lamb. Charles Lamb is a famous English essayist. Dream Children a Reverie is a personal essay and Charles Lamb is known as the prince of personal essay. Personal essay is a type of essay which reveals the personal observations and elements of the life of the author. Reverie means daydream. Charles Lamb was a bachelor. He never married, but he dreamt of a life with his own children. Dream Children, a reverie, tells about his imaginary children. It is a touching essay. Charles Lamb had a sister called Mary Lamb. Both Charles and Mary suffered from mental illness. Mary's illness was more serious. During one such outbreak of mental disturbance, Mary killed her mother. Charles remained a lifelong bachelor in order to take care of his sister. Charles Lamb and Mary Lamb together wrote the famous book Tales from Shakespeare, which includes the stories of Shakespearean dramas retold for children. You can see here the picture of Charles and Mary Lamb. Charles Lamb's most important work is Essays of Elia, published in 1823 from which this essay is taken. Ilya is a fictional name used by Lamb to refer about himself. He used the name Cousin Bridget to refer his sister Mary. The personal and conversational tone of the essays has charmed many readers. Among the individual essays, Dream Children and Old China are perhaps the most and highly generally admired. A brief biography of Charles Lamb. Charles Lamb, English essayist and critic, was born in London in 1775. He is best known for his essays of Elia. He studied at Christ's Hospital, where he formed a lifelong friendship with Samuel Taylor Coleridge. In 1798, Lamb joined as a clerk at East India House, the headquarters of the East India Company, and worked there until retirement in 1825. In 1796, Lamb's sister Mary killed their mother in a fit of madness. Lamb reacted with courage and loyalty and took up the responsibility of looking after Mary. We can say that Lamb's greatest achievements were his commendable letters and the essays that he wrote under the pseudonym Elia for London Magazine, which was founded in 1820. His style is notable as it is informal and personal. The main function of this essay was to create and delineate the persona of Elia. The essays bring out with humor and sometimes with pathos old acquaintance of Lamb. They also recall scenes from childhood and from later life, and they indulge the author's sense of playfulness and fancy. Lamb's first Elia essays were published separately in 1823. A second series appeared as the last essays of Elia in 1833. You can see here the picture of Lamb's cottage in Edmonton, London. Dream Children, A Reverie 
Children love to listen to stories about their elders when they were children. To stretch their imagination to the conception of a traditionary great uncle or grande whom they never saw. It was in this spirit that my little ones crept about me the other evening to hear about their great grandmother field who lived in a great house in Norfolk, a hundred times bigger than that in which they and Papa lived, which had been the scene, so at least it was generally believed in that part of the country, of the tragic incidents which they had lately become familiar with from the ballad of the children in the wood. Certain it is that the whole story of the children and their cruel uncle was to be seen fairly carved out in wood upon the chimney piece of the great hall, the whole story down to the robin redbreasts, till a foolish rich person pulled it down to set up a marble, one of modern invention in its stead, with no story upon it. Here, Alice put out one of her dear mother's looks, too tender to be called a braiding. Then I went on to say how religious and how good their great-grandmother field was, how beloved and respected by everybody, though she was not indeed the mistress of this great house, but had only the charge of it. And yet, in some respects, she might be said to be the mistress of it too, committed to her by the owner, who preferred living in a newer and more fashionable mansion which he had purchased somewhere in the adjoining county. But still she lived in it, in a manner as if it had been her own, and kept up the dignity of the great house in a sort while she lived which afterwards came to decay and was nearly pulled down, and all its old ornaments stripped and carried away to the owner's other house, where they were set up and looked as awkward as if someone were to carry away the old tombs they had seen lately at the abbey, and stick them up in Lady C.'s tawdry gilt drawing room. Here. John smiled as much as to say that would be foolish indeed.